Hello and welcome to this video on solving quadratic equations by factorization. Now let's suppose that we have two numbers, two mystery numbers that multiply together to give zero. What do we know about one of the numbers? Well, we know that one of these has to be zero. There's no way of multiplying two numbers to get zero unless one or both of the numbers are zero. So we could have, for example, five times zero would give zero, or it could be zero times six. But one of these numbers, at least one of these numbers, has to be zero. And we can use that principle to solve many different types of equations. So if, for example, we had x plus one and x plus two equals zero, and notice the left-hand side is factorised because we got the product of things. Whenever you have the product of expressions or brackets or whatever, then we say that's factorised. So we've got x plus 1 times by x plus 2 equals 0. So we've got two things multiplied together to give 0, just like we had above. So that means that either this is 0, the x plus 1 is 0, or the x plus 2 is 0. So if we say that x plus 1 was 0... Well, what plus 1 gives you 0? Well, it has to be minus 1. So we know that x is minus 1. And what about if x plus 2 was 0? Then x plus 2 is 0. And that means that x must be equal to minus 2. And we can see that if we put it in. So let's say x was minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And then 0 times anything is going to give 0. So that is going to be a solution. Now, you might have seen kind of brackets like this before. And that's whenever we factorise a quadratic um, expression. So the strategy is going to be make sure there's zero on one side, we're going to factorize our quadratic and then we can use this kind of reasoning here. So let's just say that we had x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals zero. Now we've already got zero on one side, this is a quadratic expression. Remember it's quadratic because we have an x squared term and possibly an x term and a constant term as well. That makes it quadratic. So we're going to, we need two numbers which add to give 6 and times to give 8. What are those two numbers? Well, what numbers multiply to give 8? Well, 4 and 2 multiply to give 8, and they add to give 6. So those are the numbers. So remember that we have two brackets, x at the start of each, and if the two numbers are 4 and 2, we put plus 4 and plus 2. It doesn't matter which way round that is. And then we're going to do a similar thing to before. So what plus 4 would give you 0? If this bracket is 0, what plus 4 is 0? What's well, minus 4? So x has got to be minus 4, because minus 4 plus 4 is 0. And what plus 2 would give you 0? Well, it's minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 would give you 0. And those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. So remember, step 1 is to make sure that 0 is on one side, if not already. Step 2 is to factorise. And then step 3 is to make each of the things in your product 0 to work out what x is or whatever other variable you have. So let's do these examples here. We've got, firstly, x squared plus 5x plus 4. 0. Now 0 is already on one side, so we need to factorise. Two numbers that add to give 5 times to give 4. Well, 4 is 2 times 2, which doesn't add to give 5. Or it could be 4 times 1, which does add to give 5. So it's going to be x plus 4, x plus 1. And that means if x plus 4 is 0, we've got x minus 4. The quick way to do it is to basically negate whatever number you've got there. So if it was positive 4, then the solution would be x is minus 4. If it was negative, then it's going to be positive. And then again, negate the plus 1, you get minus 1. And indeed, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So that would be the solutions. Right, we've got x squared minus x is equal to 0 is our second example. Now, this is a case where we have a common factor. So we can see that this and this both have a common factor of x. So we factorise the x out, have a single bracket this time. And then x times what is x squared? Well, it's x. And x times what is minus x is minus 1. Now, we've got a product of two things is 0. So either this thing is 0, i.e. x is 0. And you can see if x was 0, you've got 0 times something would give you 0. And then negate that, it becomes positive 1, so x could also be positive 1. And that also works. If you had 1 times 1 minus 1, 1 times 0 is indeed 0. That does indeed work as a solution. Right, the third one, we've got x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And it might help to put just a, a 1 here. There's an implicit 1, it's minus 1 lot of x. So we need two numbers which add to give negative 1, don't forget the minus, 
and times to give negative 6. Well, what numbers multiply to give 6 first? Well, 3 and 2. Oh, and they do combine in some ways to make minus 1, don't they? So it's going to be 2 and minus 3. 2 minus 3 gives you minus 1. So it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 3. So if we negate that, x is minus 2. And if we negate negative 3, it becomes positive 3. So x could also be 3. Question 4, we've got 2x squared plus x is equal to 6. Now notice this time we don't have 0 on one side of the equation, so we need to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation so that we've got 0 on one side. So we're going to have 2x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now there's two ways to factorise these kind of expressions. Notice that we've got a number in front of the x squared. It's not 1x squared this time, it's something more complicated. We've got 2x squared. And remember from a previous video that we have two different um, techniques to factorise this. We could just intelligently guess the brackets, or we can split the middle term. So I'm going to split the middle term, just to remind you of that method. Notice there's a 1 there. And remember, what we do is we need two numbers which add to give the middle number, as before, just like if it was just x squared rather than something x squared. But times the give, rather than just the last number, we actually do the first times the last. So first times the last is minus 12. So what two numbers multiply to give minus 12 and add to give 1? And I tend to write this little working at the side here. Well, 3, three and 4 multiply to give 12, and they do combine together to give 1, don't they? Uh, we could have 4 minus 3. So it's going to be plus 4 and minus 3. They multiply to give minus 12, and they add to give 1. So do you remember that we split the middle term, so that becomes plus 4x, using these two numbers, and minus 3x. And 4x minus 3x is indeed 1x. And then we've got these other terms here. We've still got the 2x squared. We've still got the minus 6. And then do you remember that we factorise each half? So we look at the first half and we look for a common factor. What's common to 2x squared and 4x? Well, 2x is common. Make sure you take the biggest thing out you can. Don't just take out x, you need to take out the 2 as well. Now, 2x times what is 2x squared? Well, we just need another x. And 2x times what is 4x? Well, it's 2. And then do you remember we can duplicate, leave a gap and then duplicate that bracket? Got this equals 0 here. And then you say, well, what times x plus 2 gives you minus 3x minus 6? Well, it's minus 3. And that lets us check that. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. That worked. And then, well, look at this and this. Do we have a common factor? Yes, we do. We have a common factor of that whole bracket there, the x plus 2. So we're going to factorise that out, x plus 2. And then finally, we say x plus 2 times what is 2x, x plus 2. Well, it's just 2x. And x plus 2 times what is minus 3? x plus 2 is minus 3. And then we do the usual thing. We've got the product of two things is equal to 0. So we can negate that to get minus 2. Now, this one's a bit more complicated because we've got this number in front of the x. So let's just do it the full way. We're going to say that whole bracket is equal to 0. So if we add 3 to both sides to get rid of that minus 3, and then divide both sides by 2, we've got x is 3 over 2. And the quick way of doing this, by the way, is as before, we negate whatever number's there, so it becomes positive 3, but then you divide it by whatever number's in front of the x. So it'll be positive 3 over 2, which is indeed what we've got here. And then question 5, we've got x plus 5 squared is equal to 12x plus 28. Now, a lot's going on here. Notice first we don't have 0 on one side, so we're going to have to subtract this. But also we've got this sort of unexpanded expression here. So in general, when you have an equation involving a mixture of things, just expand everything out first. So if we write the x plus 5 twice, because that's what squared means. Now, if we expand that out, we do each thing in this bracket times each thing in this bracket. So we've got x times x. We've got x squared. And then we do the first thing times the second thing. x times 5 is plus 5x. Then we do the second thing times each of these things here. So we've got 5 times the x, which is plus 5x. And we do the 5 times 5, which is plus 25. And at the same time, I'm also going to subtract 12x to get it over to the other side, and subtract 28 to get it over to the other side. So we've got 0 on one side now, and I'm going to tidy everything up by collecting like terms. I've only got one instance of x squared. How many x have we got? We've got 5x plus 5x is 10x, minus 12x is minus 2x. 
and we've got 25 minus 28 is minus 3. We need two numbers which add to give negative 2 and times give negative 3. Well, 3 and 1 are the only numbers that times give 3, so it's going to be 1 and minus 3 to add to give minus 2. So it's 1, x plus 1, x minus 3. And then that means that either x is negate that, minus 1, or x is negate that, you get positive 3. So those are the solutions. And you could substitute that back into the original equation to check that actually worked. Now, this is where it gets more interesting. We've actually got some applied examples. So this time, I don't even have an equation. I've just got this right angle triangle with some sides on it, and we need to determine x. Now, what do you know that relates to three sides of a right angle triangle? Well, Pythagoras theorem. We know that if you take one of the shorter sides squared, and then add the square of the other shorter side, that is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So from this diagram here, we can say that this side squared, so x squared, plus this side squared, x plus 1, all squared, notice my use of brackets, is equal to the longest side, the hypotenuse squared, so x plus 2 squared. And then we just simply got a quadratic equation that we need to solve. We can see when we expand these, we're going to have x squared terms, so it's a quadratic equation. So let's expand out, and I'm going to do the quick way of expanding. Do you remember if you have a bracket squared, you can do the first thing squared, which is x squared. Then you do 2 times the first thing times the last thing. 2 times x times 1 is 2x. And then you do the second thing squared. It's not x squared plus 1. Many people think x plus 1 all squared is x squared plus 1. It's not. You have this middle term as well. And then let's do the same here. We do the first thing squared is x squared. 2 times that times that. 2 times x times 2 is plus 4x. And then you do the second thing squared, so it's plus 4. Now, let's collect everything on the side where there's more x squared. We have 2x squared here, but x squared here. Now, 2x squared is bigger than x squared, so we should collect everything on the left-hand side. So, we've got 2x squared, but we're minusing x squared, so that's just an x squared left. I'm kind of skipping a step here. We've got the 2x, we're subtracting the 4x to get minus 2x. And then we're doing the 1, we're subtracting the 4, which gives you minus 3. And then we've got exactly the same as we had down here. We know that gives you x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to 3. And let's just check that on the original problem. If x was equal to 3, that side would be 3, that would be 4, and that would be 5. And we know that 3 squared plus 4 squared is indeed equal to 5 squared. 3, 4, 5 is known as a Pythagorean triple. That means a, a group of whole numbers that you can use as the sides of a right angled triangle. Right, and then finally, we've got this one here. We're given this diagram. I'll just copy it out. We've got x plus 3 at the top. We've got x plus 7 at the bottom. And we've got this height of 2x. And it tells us that the area is 72. So the area is 72. And it says, show that x squared plus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Now, be careful. Show that does not mean solve. It does not mean solve this equation to find x. We're probably going to do that in part b. What it means is to use the information that we have, like the fact the area is 72, to somehow generate this equation. So, if we're told the area is 72, you think, well, do we know how to find the area of a trapezium? This is a trapezium because you've got one pair of parallel sides. Well, yes, we do. Do you remember that it's the average of the parallel sides times the height between them? And that would give us the area. So we can form an equation from that. So the average of the parallel sides, well, to find the average of two numbers, you add them, divide them by two. So we add the two parallel sides and divide them by two. That gives us the average of the parallel sides. Then we times by the height between them. And we know that gives us the area which we're told of 72. Well, this is an equation, isn't it? So we can simplify this and hopefully eventually gives us this show that thing here. So let's just simplify this. We have 2x plus 10 at the top. And then, well, 2x plus 10, we're dividing it by 2, so it becomes x plus 5. And I'm going to put it in a bracket now. But we're multiplying it by 2x. I can put that on the front if we like. And then, well, we've got some brackets so we can expand that out. 2x squared plus 2x times 5 is 10x equals 72. And then if we subtract the 72 to get 0 on one side, as we usually do, 
we get this. Now, we're nearly there, but this is x squared rather than 2x squared. But notice that everything divides by 2. Everything has a factor of 2, so we can divide everything by 2. So if we divide both sides of the equation by 2, that becomes x squared, plus that becomes 5x, that becomes minus 36. And 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So indeed, we do have this equation. Then it says, hence determine the height. So we want to find out what this height is here, which is 2x. Now, if we knew what x was, then we could times it by 2 to find the height. So we factorise in the usual way. It's going to be plus 9 and minus 4. So that means that x is negative 9 or x is 4. Now, this x here couldn't be a negative number because otherwise you'd have uh, 2 times minus 9. That height would be minus 18. You can't have negative lengths. So it's going to be this solution here. And I tend to put like a strike through the solution that doesn't make sense in the context of the question. So we've got x is 4 and that means the height is 2 times that, which is 8. Now let's do these two final test your understanding questions, which I want you to do. So we've got solve x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. And we've got this second equation, which is harder. We've got 2y minus 5 squared equals 15 minus 2y squared minus y. So you may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at these. Right, let's do this first one. We need two numbers to, that add to give minus 7 and times give 12. Notice that 0 is already on one side, so we don't need to do that first step. So, uh, what are the numbers? What times give 12? Well, 3 and 4 does, and they're either both positive or both negative. Well, if we had minus 3 and minus 4, they would add to give minus 7. So it's going to be x minus 3 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. And then x could either be positive 3, remember we negate that because if you had 3 minus 3 that would give you 0 for this bracket and if this bracket was 0, what minus 4 is 0? Well it's 4. Remember we just negate that so we get x is 4. And you can always check it if you did 4 squared minus 7 times 4 plus 12 that is indeed 0. Right let's do this harder one. Uh, we need to expand out this bracket first and then we need to get 0 on one side. So if we do the quick way of expanding this bracket, you could write out the bracket twice and expand carefully, um, but we can do the first thing squared, which is not 2y squared, it's 4y squared. 2y times 2y is 4y squared. Then we do 2 times that times that. 2 times 2y is 4y times minus 5 is minus 20y. And then we do the second thing squared. Minus 5 squared is plus 25 is 15 minus 2y squared minus y. We collect everything on the side where there's more y squareds. Well, 4y squared is bigger than minus 2y squared, so we're going to add 2y squared to both sides. That gives you 6y squared. If we add the y to get on here, we're going to have minus 19y. And if we subtract the 15, we're going to get plus 10 equals 0. And then let's uh, split the middle term. So we need to find two numbers which add to give the middle number but because this number is not 1, because it's not just y squared, we need to find two numbers which multiply to give 6 times 10, which is 60. Now, 15 and 4 multiply to give 60, and you can combine them in some way to get minus 19. It's going to be minus 15 and minus 4. So we split the middle term. So we now have minus 15y, minus 4y, plus 10 equals 0. Now we factorise the first half and the second half. What can we factorise out here? Well, we can take out 3 and y, and we're left with, well, 3y times 2y gives 6y squared. 3y times minus 5 gives that. And then we duplicate the bracket. And what times 2y minus 5 gives this? It's minus 2y. And then, look, we have a common factor of 2y minus 5, so we take that out. And then we finally say, well, 2y minus 5 times what would give you this, well, it's 3y. And 2y minus 5 times by what gives you minus 2, 2y minus 5, well, it's minus 2. And now we've got a factorised expression equals 0, that's great. Um, and do you remember the quick way of doing this? You could, you could say that 2y minus 5 equals 0 and then solve that. But you negate that, which is 5, but then divide by that number, so it's 5 over 2. And this one here... You negate that, so it's positive 2, divided by 3, it's 2 thirds. And well done if you got that right.